Hi, it's Paul from Link International. Uh, time for another video. Uh, don't forget, if you click down there, you'll find the, the bell to get notified of all the future videos, and you can also subscribe to all the videos, uh, all the future videos as well. Um, today we're gonna have a look at a new kit from Armory Models. In fact, this is their first 148th aircraft. Uh, we sell this on the shop. We sell the, what's another, there's a late engine version, and there's another couple of versions come as well. In fact, we sell Pretty much all of Armory Model stuff on the on the store actually, and it goes for paying for the various websites, competitions, giveaways, all that sort of stuff, and a few projects we have in the in process. Anyway, enough of that. Today we're going to have a look at this is a 148th Fairy Flycatcher. The Ferry Flycatcher was a British, single-seat biplane carrier-borne fighter aircraft, made by Ferry Aviation Company, which served from 1923 to 1934. The Flycatcher was designed to meet the requirements for a carrier and floatplane fighter, to replace the Gloucester Nightjar. The first of three prototype Flycatchers made its maiden flight on November 28, 1922. After trials, the Flycatcher was ordered into production. The Flycatcher was a remarkable design for its time, and was one of the earliest aircraft specifically designed for operation from aircraft carriers. Flaps ran the entire trailing edges of both wings, providing the aircraft with the capability of using only 46 meters of deck space. Production of the Flycatcher began in 1923 entering service with 402 Flight, Fleet Air Arm. The Flycatcher was flown from all British carriers of its era. Some 192 were produced. Okay, so let's see what's in the box. Um, so this is by Army Models, 148th, Ferry Flycatcher, early production. Uh, there's also a late production as well uh, that's been released. We have that in the shop as well as this. Um, and also coming is a couple of float plane versions as well there. At some point they'll be arriving. And on the box, a uh, couple of options. Uh, usual do not e eat sort of warning. So let's take the top off. Okay, so everything is inside this corrugated cardboard box. So take that off. We've got black and white instructions, colour painting guide, and decal guide. And all the parts are in there, plastic parts and a bag of resin parts as well. Oh, a couple of bags of resin parts actually. There's the decals over the side, photo etch. And that's your lot, so I'll just dump these on the floor. So, um, let's have a look at the start with photo etch. Um, looks pretty neat, lots of small parts up there. About like about 80 of those little things up there. So that looks pretty neat. Instrument panel. Decals. A um, couple of sheets actually up there of decals. I want to acetate instrument panel as well. There's instructions for those. They seem pretty good. Can't see much backing film apart from what you'd expect to see around numbers. Okay, let's look at the parts. Let's look at the plastic to start with. Now, not all these parts are used. Um, so we've got... So there's a little... I see patterns in the plastic, but I can't actually feel them. So it's just probably the way the plastic... Um, set but some really nice detail on I think that's a upper wing I'm thinking I can feel there's like rivets on the top and I can see fabric detail between the rivets as well um, so that's really nice detail on there same as that one as well top and bottom Interesting to see what it looks like with a coat of paint on. Don't know if you can see in the light. There's little like patterns on the in the plastic there, which is 
see if, but I can't feel them with my nails, so I'm suspecting it's just details in the in the plastic itself. It's not the surface. Anyway, more parts. Again, lots of fine detail in there, and sort of fabric detail as well. So that's pretty neat. A little bit of flash on the outside there. This is the main sort of small parts. Again, quite nice attachment points. Some fine, some pretty fine parts. You'd have to be careful taking those off. Maybe saw some of these off so you don't break parts. Again, a little bit of flash just there as well on the like propeller hub. And all that. Looks good though. Some clean up. Fuselage halves and fuselage bottom. Feels like there's some. I'm trying to see if there's alignment pins. I don't think there are. There's a hole there, but it seems to match up with a hole on the other side as well. So it's not a pin. It's just two holes. I think it's, it looks more like it's a hole for something to be attached. So there's no alignment pins, as you'd expect at the short run kits. Um, a bit of flash, but it all looks pretty good. It's easy enough. Lots of lots of really nice detail on here. So that all looks okay. So I forgot to say this is Armory's first 48th, uh, 148th scale kit. Um, but they do. Basically their sort of bread and butter work is um, resin. Uh, they do a huge um, scale of, a uh, huge list of uh, resin wheels and other resin parts. So they're just recently branching out into kits. But, um, but so far it's pretty impressive. The amount of detail on the kit itself is pretty impressive. Although you have the usual sort of short run not problems, but th things to watch out for with a li little bit of flash, which is no problem. Um, but also alignment pins. So you might be adding little tabs to things to make sure things line up nicely. So instructions. Um, basically, most of the planes are silver. Um, you've got seven decal options. And instructions for all of them. It's pretty neat. Paints so are in Humble, Hataka, and AK Interactive. And as for the. Oh, I forgot to look at these resin parts. So, so I'll quickly look at these. There will be photographs of all of this on the website, as well as we're going to have a close up look at some of these parts when we go through the video. Uh, a nice resin engine, cylinders, really nice, really nice resin actually. Um, usual sort of cleanup we have to do with resin. That's a Jaguar engine. There's the parts in there, small parts, machine guns, and other small parts. So it looks pretty neat. There'll be close-up photographs of those. You'll probably see some that when I in the next part of the video, but they'll all be up on the website as well. Instructions. Um, so paper black and white. Layout of the sprues, pretty neat. See certain parts aren't used. They're probably used in the either the later version or the late version or the float plane versions. And coming over, there's 42 steps, which is a lot, but each step is like only adding a few pieces. Uh, so the first six steps are building the engine, building the frame the pilot sits in. Um, some resin parts go in here as well. Some s options for the door to open the door, the pilot gets in and out. And then so it's pretty straightforward. Da -da -da, some bits you need some styrene rod to supply yourself for the looks of it. 
uh, was it 0.65 millimeters diameter of 11 and 14 millimeters long um, and some wire you need as well and that's it that doesn't look too bad and obviously you have some uh, some wires to add as well um, so well, looks pretty neat. let's have let's quickly go through some of the steps and we'll have a close-up look at some of the parts and don't forget um, the close-up uh, close-up photographs of everything on the website so the history in plastic that's pretty simple because the only history dates back to a 1968 uh, kit by impact kits that's a 148 kit and everything that's not armory comes from that um, there's lifelike Lin and Lindbergh and pyro basically just the same molds so this is definitely you know, easily the best kit out there at the moment of the flag catcher so as you saw the box is a completely enclosed corrugated box with a cardboard cover plastic parts are all inside really sealable bags with the resin parts in their own bag 2p frets of a backing sheet so overall very good um, plus 74 plastic parts 140 photo etch parts 26 resin parts decal sheet six page black and white assembly guide and a full color six page glossy painting guide so going through the instructions so we'll start off page one the top half of the page as you see all about putting together the resin engine um, you'll need to source some wire for this as well you need a few bits of wire and plastic rods throughout the build from your own stash very nice resin engine to make in in the end uh, some nice painting will end up with something that really nice then at the bottom start building the framework that's going to go around the pilot um, looks nice might be a little intricate in building it but overall it'll look good on the next page uh, steps 12 to 21 this is basically in this guide there's lots of small steps rather than a few steps with a lot of stuff to do in each one so anyway on this page we're mostly still building the framework that goes around the cockpit um, photo etch parts in here for some instruments acetate panel for the instrument panel um, so it should look pretty neat but a lot of this might be hidden but it is an open cockpit so you're good uh, at the bottom you put together the fuselage halves note there's no alignment pins or anything like that so you have to add little tabs yourself everywhere to make sure everything lines up and be extra careful with it over the page uh, steps 22 to 33 start off at the top with adding the full length flaps there's nice detail on the on the wings themselves we've got some very fine detail on there um, wheels are made of three parts each at the undercarriage if you're going to do the aircraft that's on a catapult on HMS Ramillies then there's steps 28 and 29 you have to do otherwise you don't have to bother and again adding some more fine details to the wing and again parts 39 so four of them they only go on the catapult version page 4 is steps 34 to 40 almost complete start adding the struts bit on top of the lower wing um, when it comes to adding the uh, the rigging the wings are one piece so there's a couple of ways to do the rigging if you use the method where you drill through the wings then you'll have to fill the holes in at the top and bottom again afterwards um, photo etch going on the outside of the uh, fuselage where the machine guns are fitted well, it looks pretty neat um, and then the top wing goes on top again with full length uh, flaps and some other small parts as well and on to the last page of the instructions just two steps at the top we fit the engine to the fuselage and there's a couple of options for um, for the propeller not the propeller itself but basically the hubs that go around it so we can make some choice there and do a bit of test fitting to make sure it looks right Step 42 is basically showing you where the rigging goes and I think you can actually work it out from the diagram but if you look around the internet there's quite a few diagrams well not diagrams but photographs out there where you can see what's going on with the rigging those should help you out a fair bit 
So I say it's step 42. Um, should end with nice, quite a nice little kit of an interesting little aircraft in some quite nice detail actually, what with the resin parts, photo etch, and some very nice detail on the outside of the uh, plastic. Paints and decals. So the paints are called out in Humbrol, Hataka, AK Interactive. Uh, all seven decal options are mostly silver, um, with some extra colours. Most of the the big blocks of colour. Um, seem to be brought out with decals, but you can obviously paint them as well for a, a, some argue a slightly better effect. There's some interesting and colourful options on, on there. Um, number six with, from HMS Ramillies has a great big decal across the top wing. Um, and it looks pretty good. And you also get a decal placement guide for the small decals as well. Um, you get left, right, top and bottom views of the aircraft. So there's plenty there to get everything right colour-wise. And it's not a complicated paint scheme anyway. Okay, an overall conclusion. So basically it's the only modern kit of a flycatcher that's out there. The only other things uh, in 148 scale are pretty ancient. The original dies from the 60s. That being said, it's a, pl it's a plastic resin photo etch kit. Lots of nice detail. Not designed for an absolute beginner because there's no alignment pins on anything. You might have to make um, some other little pins yourself to line things up and add extra strength to things. It's a fighter, biplane fighter with rigging, so there's that to do as well. But that aside, if you've got a few kits under your belt, it'll be a good one to tackle some of these subjects for the first time. Um, nice. Uh, colourful uh, aircraft, colourful decals as well to go on it. So it should be pretty nice and hopefully it uh, should do well for Armoury, their first foray into 148th scale kits. And don't forget, we sell it in our shop and all the profits go towards keeping the websites open and running the competitions, giveaways and all that sort of stuff.